despite appearances, this lawn isn't as good as it looks. But I'm going to sort it out so it looks like this, this and this in a few months time. So today we're going to scarify, oversee the top dress and I'm going to show you how to do it right now. Throughout history, men have always been drawn to grass. Whether it be in the park, a sports ground, or simply in your own garden, there's just something about those quintessential British stripes that makes you want them for yourself. Not to mention getting one over on your neighbours. Follow Daniel on his lawn journeys in his step-by-step -step videos this year whilst you create your own lawn journey achieving that dream lawn you have always wanted with simple and easy to follow methods. The lawn you have always dreamed of is only a grass seed away. Now sit back and enjoy the video. Oh, and one more thing. If you want to subscribe, you know what to do. Okay, so where do we start with this one? Over the last few days, well, actually for the last 10 days, I've been going over this lawn with my fork and a bucket. I've been picking out annual meadow grass and I've got three flexi tub fulls worth of just little plants. Luckily, because this is a 100% like perennial ryegrass sward, when in the winter it dies back, it allows the annual meadow grass to, to show itself. So that's good because we can see it and we can dig it out. And luckily it's just like little um, isolated patches that's so easily dug out, but just times a thousand of them. But where we've had a big problem, I've had to dig bigger holes that I've just shown you. So that's one which I've, which I've filled in. These little ones I'll just fill in with a handful of sand, with a little bit of seed mixed in. Going over here, in my last video, I talked about sanding, digging it out and re-sanding this and seeding it. But it's just easier to do it by filling in the patches you've dug out with turf from a nice area which is over here so I can just concentrate on watering in one area rather than watering a hundred small patches I can just do two big ones and that's out of the way so you can't see it so what we're going to do today is we're going to remove all this top growth first I'm just going to mix it up a bit I'm going to get my hair to it first to remove the bulk and then we'll go on with the cylinder and really get it scalped to within an inch of its life because we didn't do that last year because uh, it wasn't ready so I had to just do it on number one on the hater so we'll get rid of all that and then we'll scarify it and then we'll see how it looks and probably go over it again with the hater just to pick up any bits and I've got the Johnson's Premier Pitch just there keep this as a Premier Pitch lawn got the right conditions here the sun shining on it all summer so we get that really really dark green stripe then we've got the jack's magic in the van which then will spread rain due tuesday so that gets off to a good start and this year this is the first time i've ever done any videos here we're actually four days earlier than we were last year when i first did the composting so we're on for a good uh, getting ahead of ourselves so let's go and get the machines out and then we'll have a chat then right so i've got the hair to out ready to go i'll drop it down to one if the mower doesn't pick it up, it's fine because it'll just get scarified and picked up eventually. But it's just getting rid of that bulk for the cylinder not to struggle through it. What I forgot to tell you was, is that all this lawn has had this year is a dose of iron and a wetting agent. This is because I didn't want that annual meadow grass getting out of control before we scarified it and then seeded it. And then we have to get on with the mower to cut it whilst we're waiting for the seed to come through. That's not ideal when you've got little patches like this because what happens is the grasses that are already there start growing sideways, filling in those uh, patches because you're relying on, a grass relies on other grasses around it to keep it upright. And if you've just got one bit of grass which has nothing to prop it up, it'll just grow like a pampas grass if you like, and um, that's not what you want. So not fed it, uh, we'll feed it in a couple of weeks once the seeds come through. Like I said, we'll get it looking like them pictures at the beginning. So let's start them more up get going. So, 
just when you think you've got all the annual meadow grass that you can see, you cut the lawn really short and then you realise you've missed loads of other. So what I did was, as I was mowing, you might have seen me, got my spray can out. And don't worry about that, it'll just wither away and it'll just water away and, and, and fade. So you don't need to worry about that. So I just get my, I can't get my other fork, so I'm going to have to use just one because all my Jack's Magic's on top of it. I can just see it sticking out. So we'll just get in there, get it out. And the good thing with a fork is, with an edging tool, it's just, it just cuts ever everything. Whereas this, you can just gently tease it out and you don't have to disturb all the other grasses. They just stay where they are and, and that's a good thing. So we can just fill that now with a bit of sand, with a bit of seed in it, and then that'll come through. And then put the Jack's Magic on top, just as a little bit of a, protection with a bit of water, you know, holds the water. So do that one there again. You see just a little one this one but still it could turn into a big one and probably will. Same there. The patches aren't as big as I sprayed, I just wanted to uh, know where it was that I needed to be. So that's uh, that's all out. So that is how you get rid of little patches of annual meadow grass. And if the wife or whatever says, what are you using a park for? I've got to eat with that. You just say, well, I'm going to wash it first before I put it back in the drawer. Right, so, just pulled out another half flexi tub full of annual meadow grass. Plenty around. Even where I hadn't sprayed, there was still plenty. When you find one, then you seem to find laws, but that's probably because it's dropped the seeds and then it's grown from that original point. But we'll give it a go now with a cylinder. I've got it on number one setting. Give it a good scalp, and then no doubt we'll find more annual meadow grass. And then that's our last opportunity then have a good walk over and see if we can spot any more but failing that that's all we can do so let's get on with this and then we'll be in a position to scarify scalp the lawn and look annual meadow grass just creeping on the floor you know are you supposed to get that out when you uh, keep the grass long it just adapts to any environment and that's the annoying thing it can seed at like eight mil growing at eight mil on a golf green or five mil it can still get to seed or it can seed at however long it gets so we'll just pull that out now while we can see it I'll have another walk over and let's see what we can get out. Uh, hopefully the scarifier will pull a bit out, make it more visible. Um, like I said, that's the last chance we're gonna get. So I've got the scarifier out. I really wanna get into this today. I really wanna go quite deep. So I've got it on uh, number four and that'll give us a good deep scarify. So we'll get all that thatch out, all those little pines off that tree there. There's loads of leaves in there, all kinds of things. We really wanna get that out and then we'll create some grooves for the seed to fall into. So yeah, it's looking a bit worse for wear, but we know the end result is gonna be spectacular. So we'll get on with the scarifying, and we'll see how it goes. job that is that's a great job so what we'll do now just have a look how deep I've gone with those grooves so I don't really want to close those up so what I'm going to do is I'm going to rake it up as I would normally and then instead of going on with a mower I'm just gonna blow it down onto the next lawn because I can mow that one and, and I'm not doing that one yet and then pick it up because uh, I, like I said I don't really want to get a mower on there to close those uh, lines up because the seed will fall in there really nice. But we'll have a look once it's raked up and see how long the grass is because that's the only issue you've got. Because if the scarifier has brought up a lot of grass and that needs cutting, then we've no other choice than to go on with the lawnmower. Um, but it'll have to be the hater which has a suction, but that's the heaviest mower 
uh, if it's about 10 kilograms heavy than the uh, Alex. But we'll get there, we'll decide in a sec, but first job is get all this raked up. Probably my least favourite job of these jobs that I do is the raking up. One, it's boring. Two, you have to exercise. And three, you get blisters on your hands. So just finishing up raking this little area here. This rake, b and Magnuson, I think it's like B&Q's own make now. Really good. So much so that I'm happy as it stands to just go on here now and seed. I'm not gonna mow it or anything because you can see I've got loads of nice little grooves for the seed to sit in. So this rake has really revolutionized the gardening world for me. So if this is a rake that you want, this is the one you want to get. It's only about 20 quid as well. So well worth the investment because you can not only use it for obviously jobs like this, but in the winter when it comes to raking leaves up and maybe prunings and plants and stuff, it's, it comes into its own then as well. So worthwhile investment. So we're looking really good now. Just finished off these edges with turf from there. Like I said before, I'm just gonna mix some sand and a little bit of seed just to throw in these holes, almost like a golf divot where you just kind of go like what you thought that'll do. What I'll do is I'll just put a little bit over here of these squares and I'll just run my straight edge over that, like my spirit level, and then that'll just kind of give it a nice level finish. And look at that, live on a little bit of uh, annual meadow grass sticking out, so we'll just get that out. I have my fork in my pocket. That was a good spot, wasn't it? Just thought, as you, just, you think you've got it all, just one little piece just evades you. Well, not you, I've got you. Right, so I'll go and show you how I mix my sand and seed. Just got my flexi tub. I'm just using the sand from last week. I'll just throw a bit in my bucket. And literally just a handful of seed in there like that and that's fine and then just mix it all together because you don't want hundreds of seeds in one little space because you'll just get clumps growing and they'll get a disease and they'll die off and you'll just be left with disease patches everywhere so again I'm just I'm not even gonna put some more seed in I'm just bulking up the mixture that I already made because don't forget, I'm going to be also be going on with the seed in the spreader as well, so we're going to be getting more seed. But this is just to make sure we definitely get some seed in those holes. So that's it. I've got my spirit level. We'll see you over there. So I've got that hole there. Just take a bit of that, put it in, stand on it. Job done. Easy. So time to do the rest. Oh, look at that. Can you see that? A leather jacket. Ooh, nasty. Look, okay, so we've just got a bit of a patch here where I filled it in. It's just a bit uneven, so if the mower runs over that, it's going to go doo doo. So we want to sort that out now while we can. So I'll just take some of the sand mixture and we'll just put it on. And then we can just run our straight edge over it and what that does is it just gives us a kind of a stoppage on either side which means we can't go any lower so we can use it as an edge to kind of get it nice and level and then when we mow it it's going to be stop on, st stop on, spot on. So you can see I'm just running that over nice and level either way that's not going to cause us any problems in the future. Right this day is really dragging on it's took me hours to do this now 
We've been here since half eleven and it's now three o'clock and I've not went near finished yet. So I've been around filling all these holes in. What I have done also is I filled that in ready for seeding. What I did was I just filled that with the sand that I left over from last week over there. I stood on it all, compacted it down and then went over with a fine finish and then went over with a, my spirit level and just screeded it like I did before, just on the edges of the existing lawn, which gave me a level surface, same there. So that's ready to seed now, as is this. Wind's dropped significantly from earlier, which is good, so we can get on with that. You can see all the grooves now, ready to accept that new seed. It's there saying, seed me, come on, give it to me. Well, we're gonna give it to you, so let's get on with it. We've got our seed weighed out there, five kilos in there, works out on this lawn at 35 grams per square meter, which is a good overseeding rate. So we're going with that. Got the existing lawn to come through as well. So this is now when we start to think this lawn's gonna look absolutely great this year. So we'll get on with that. What I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go on on number 30 on this. That doesn't mean I'm dropping it at the correct rate. That just means I'm dropping it at a rate that I'm comfortable, that I know I won't run out before I get to the end. So if you're not comfortable, just drop your setting down to like 24, 25, 26, and just keep spreading your weird out seed until you run out multiple times, going up and down, left to right, whatever you want. And then you're not going straight off on 32 and it's coming out quicker than 35 grams a square meter because if you've only got so much seed, you run out and want money to do the whole garden. So it's uh, important that you, you know what you're doing with that. So that went on pretty well. Took me about five passes in multiple directions to get it on. Well, we've got a nice even coating everywhere. It didn't run out because I did it on a low setting, like I said before. So that's the best way to do it. And I've just got the customer knocking on the window, trying to be funny. So I'll just uh, see what he wants and I'll get back to you. Right, so he was saying, what have you done to me lawn? But he's only joking because he knows when it comes good, he's got the best lawn in the world, so just having a laugh. Right, so let's go on with this Jack's Magic now. I'm running out of time because I wanted to go and watch the football, the Liverpool-Man City game, but it's looking very unlikely. Right, same drill as at Steve's job. We've got our bag of Jack's Magic. Now the number one question I get asked, even though I do say in the videos, but I'll say it again, just for those of you who didn't hear. You don't use Jack's Magic for levelling it's not got levelling properties because it rots away so you've got to use a substance like sand for that or oh yeah just sand or root zone like root zone 70 30 top dressing what you know you can wet that down and create a, a root zone with it but if you just want to get seed growing like yeah, our levels are fine we've done our work with the sand where we needed to change the levels or you know work on that little square there so now it's just case to put the jack's magic over just to give it a little bit of protection it holds water Another good thing about it, the sand just dries out in a few seconds. I mean, look at that, it's bone dry now. So Jack's Magic, if you're just looking for something to cover your seed, compost will do the trick. So like at Steve's, because I've got plenty with me, I'll just tip a full bag out and we'll be good to go. A few people over the last year have said their Jack's Magic has had uh, loads of rubbish in it, but honestly, I must have bought like 300 bags in my lifetime since I've been using it and I've never had any um, anything in it at all. Oh yes please. Yeah we'll do it a sec. We're just live on air. Sorry about that. Got to keep your staff watered haven't you. So like it stays just raking it and then what I'll do is with any lumps or bumps not that there's many in this we can just pick those up at the end. Make sure you leave enough to drag to the edge. And what this will do is also it'll work that seed even more into those little grooves we created with the scarifier. 
and then that'll get the seed going even better because like I re uh, referred to in the video as well seed has to be able to turn once it germinates just so it can get in the right position and if it's squashed in the ground it's not going to be able to do that so if it's just sitting on the soil nice and in a nice open groove with a nice bit of fluffy compost on top it's going to germinate quicker and also compost gets red hot really quick especially if it's wet and that's what gives you the germination you don't need sunlight for germination all you need is heat and moisture some people think you need sunlight but I know sunlight creates the heat but you can have artificial heat which isn't from the sun which would still get grass going like in your house you could put it on the radiator if you wanted or something like that in a greenhouse like a paraffin lamp or if you're looking to uh, do the uh, seed hack where you wet it through for a few hours a few days before and get it going you can use artificial heat that way you only need the sunlight the actual UV rays once the grass gets to second leaf stage when it can actually photosynthesize but before then the sun's rays other than for the heat uh, are useless really so that's uh, one bag roughly again about nine square meters somebody was saying in one of them spreaders I'll never use one uh, you get 15 but in that 15 square meters you get a lot of bands where the uh, metal across the, the, the grill doesn't leave any compost um, so that's why I won't buy one and I won't buy one because I don't need one look at this I've just done this and uh, never even needed one so it'd be 400 quid I would never see back not to mention the storage issues so right so that's uh, all the stuff we don't want so we'll just pick that up and then I'll get on with the rest Right, okay, what a day this has been. I'm absolutely shattered. What have we done? We scalped the lawn, we scarified, we overseeded, and then we top dressed with Jackson Magic. Nothing there that you, the homeowner, can't do yourself. All that's left for me to do here is water, as always. I've got to be on this now every day, other than when it rains until we get some germination, then we can get on with some products. So I'm looking forward to this getting finished. Those pictures that I showed earlier are what keep me going when I'm doing this. Until we meet again, take care.